You said just now that you have influences of various great masters, uh, of course, with the base of Suresh Babu. Uh, would you like to explain in a little uh, simple fashion for people to understand what special traits you feel that you absorb in your music from these great masters? I would not like to name like I learned this, this from that, but, <laughs> but all of them have made me conscious of certain things like uh, Tonal beauty is very, very important. If you want to reach a lay listener, it's not only Shastra, but it is also, for a singer, voice is the medium. And that will make uh, you reach the lay listener. Otherwise, you may face instant rejection if your voice is not good today. So when you listen to Lata Mangeshkar, Asha Bhosh, and all those good singers, I mean, Tonal beauty of your voice is a must today. Excellent. That is one thing. One. Then uh, interpretation of Abhiragaru's tradition and modernity, changing time. That you have to keep in mind because if you could keep on singing what you have been taught all the time, that will uh, lead you I mean, stagnancy. So. It is very, very important that you have to think all the time and you should be able to interpret ragas. Uh, I mean like uh, rag sham kalyan. Whenever I listen to rag sham kalyan, I don't see any kalyan there. Then why this kalyan, sham kalyan? Then I try to bring in kalyan in sham kalyan. So that's how you uh, make your singing different from others. There is logic, there is reasoning. It's not just going against tradition, but you, there is a thought behind it. Then, uh, clarity of the words. I have, <laughs> because uh, most of our singers, when they sing, uh, you don't know what they are singing. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I see that my pronunciation is clear. Uh, and it has that emotional content also. So it is very important for a singer that his uh, diction is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Sahitya is not that important as it is with Carnatic music. I mean, we don't uh, adhere strictly to our compositions. We take liberties, right from Guru to their Shishya. We keep on taking liberties. But that gives, uh, makes a room for the Raga, I think so. Raga grows in that space. So we look for Raga and not Sahitya. Our object is to project Raga, Raga's meaning, musical meaning. It's not Sahitya meaning. Sahitya comes secondary. Would you say that it is in the Vilambit that uh, Sahitya in Kirana becomes secondary, but in the, uh, in the Drut, I think the Sahitya is playing even in Kirana quite an important role. No, but your objective to uh, project Raga, yeah, is the, is the Raga, um, yes, yeah. it comes as a part of the musical material. Very true. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to project as in Thumri singing. You also want to project uh, the Sahitya. Right. So in Khyal, I don't think you want to project words. They come as the part of the musical material and they bring in variety in articulation. They help you to set uh, uh, rhythm, they help you to lend emotional color. So I think words have a major role to play, but they are not there to, like they are in sa South Indian music. An instrument, in, in any case, there is no Sahitya, so we have our own Sahitya, but that's a, that's a. There is another, uh, Prabhaji, uh, you have uh, developed your own, as you exp explained, uh, learning from Suresh Babu and then influences of these great masters to created your own idiom and, and your own approach. Uh, have you also tried to translate that into your own students? Can you talk a little bit about your students whom you have built up and who are singing today? Uh, would you please repeat it? Uh, your, your students, huh? Shishyas, huh? whom you have taught, yeah. are they following the same approach of what you are teaching? As a I keep telling them they don't follow me. <laughs> it is up to them. I mean, some students are, yes, they are trying to be independent and I hope one day they'll make their name. 
they need not imitate you but they can follow you no yeah following is all right but still i mean this phrase this i mean i don't want that let there be something different because i remember one great sitar player recently made an announcement that uh, i don't imitate vilayat khan but i follow him so i i think yeah, that yeah, there's yeah, a lot uh, yes, not in yes. what uh, that sentence means in my yeah, personal true, opinion true. so uh, today yeah in that sense they must follow yeah apart from music prabhaji what are your other interests if any other interest sure. my interests are related to music only <laughs> like um, i like to compose um as i told you after my guruji passed away i wanted to sing ragas which he did not uh, teach me then where to go and unless i um, become shishya they won't teach me so i had to be on my own and that made me compose and my first composition uh, mark bihar uh, became very very popular and uh, my listeners can you, please, can you please demonstrate my god i won't be able to sing that good <laughs> just to bring out the speciality the, there is another uh, the same uh, rag i mean kalavati also right it's the fast styles tana mana dhana to pe varu tana mana dhana to pe varu बार बार थोरी सावरी सुरत और नैनवा रसी ले तना आई एम सॉरी आफ्टर टॉकिंग तना मन धन तो पे वारू तना मन धन आई बी लिसनिंग टू कर्नाटिक म्यूजिक एंड आई लव इट एंड I like your gamakas I like your sargam rendering and I think that has stimulated my thinking and I have tried to I mean unconsciously cautiously it has come into my In fact there is a view amongst the Carnatic that your tana mana dhana is very very <coughs> close to Carnatic music yeah. and uh, coming from you today that yes it did influence you is information There's another uh, question today um, there was a feeling in the morning i said that uh, some of the great our great masters felt that the direction that our music is taking these days is becoming more entertainment more thrill more excitement rather than inward looking music what is your view to some extent i think it is true because of these big festivals and uh, 5000 audience 10000 people listening to you big uh, speakers and all that so you want to somehow impress your audience get clapping get wow wow so all this uh, this has led to all this i suppose but there are musicians even amir khan i mean i have seen him just um, closing his eyes even if one uh, listener is there he would not bother yeah, right. so there are still artists like amir khan who would not bother about the audience and who will take forward our no. classical dance <laughs> that is true but uh, do you think any anything can be done to uh, ensure that this trend is uh, restricted i have to i think we have to educate our masses i mean we have to include music in our education if the audience is knowledgeable they will know what is good what is not good uh, so that will be a sort of check uh, on the performer and we have to make our performers more responsible mm -hmm. they have to be <laughs> responsible it's not just after money and name and uh, media projection they have to be really correct correct do you think that um, corporate sponsorship has helped but also vitiated our cause because uh, when uh, corporate pays a lot of money to our icons they want value for money and value for money means popularity and popularity implies uh, entertainment and therefore uh, it is believed that uh, some of our icons many of our icons who are charging several lakhs of rupees uh, cannot be raise that kind of money from selling of tickets or souvenirs and all that so corporate sponsorship is is a must 
and because of the corporates requiring value for their <coughs> money, they want uh, to have. I, I remember one great icon was telling me the other day that he was he was tuning his instrument in the green room, and the man, bank general manager said that look here, our audience, you know, they don't understand classical music very much. So, you do not do it, you will start with it and start with it. Now, this uh, you see, kind of situation, this is, this is, a, this is a fact. But, uh, therefore, I, I, I mean, this is my personal belief, that uh, every uh, listener uh, wants uh, intellectual as well as emotional satisfaction. But the intellectual satisfaction or element of surprise, thrill, excitement, etc., is taking over almost. I don't know what is happening in the South, but what do you feel? But I think we have to train our listeners for that. But it, it is, is for the icons to do that. It is their business to but give to the audience not what they want, but, but what they, they should want. They should listen to, unless you get into that uh, fight with tabla, they will not, uh, they, they will not get clapped. Un unless you give the basic, the rudimentary thing for the listeners, who are going to be listeners, you have to start it from the academic side. Right. Yeah. Very. Uh, he must have In big festivals it is not possible. things to understand. You see, uh, so many what has happened that there was a time when the audience, as she rightly said, today is 5,000, 10,000 people. To, to please an average of, of 5,000, 10,000 people is extremely difficult. Whilst it was an audience of 200, 250 once upon a time, yeah, yeah. the 10% Rasikas mm. formed <coughs> 25 people. And today the same uh, 25 are there, but uh, they become a minimal We should uh, go percentage. back to our uh, old time by tucks, small by tucks. We should no. do something, what you are doing yeah. here. <coughs> that I am doing when, at my... When you say popularity, when an when a artist could draw about 5,000, 10,000 people, crowd pull there, I don't uh, uh, expect him to serve the music. And they can never be a server. Yeah. They will, I mean, they will go with the crust, the wave, the popularity wave. That is, the, that's the, that is their good luck. They are very popular and all that. What, is, what are they going to deliver to the audience is questionable. Yes, sir, the role, uh, the responsibility is with the artist. Sure. Exactly. But the listener here, having listened to their cassettes or CDs, whatever. Listener they, also they, has they some responsibility. Listener also has some responsibility. No, I, I, I am with you, absolutely. No, no, The, right. uh, the responsibility is... Uh, but today I have uh, 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 attended Carnatic music. I find almost the entire audience is involved. Yeah, yeah. They're they all, are okay, trained. Clapping and, uh, so they, they, they are trained. Yeah. Because they, they know what is happening in India, uh, Hindustani music. Does no, not. Our audience is not so, initiated. Well, 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 excuse no. me, I want to... I didn't catch you. Hindustan music, what did he say? No, no. What they mean is the involvement <coughs> of Rasika in a yeah. Carnatic scenario is far more pronounced than in the Hindustani. This yes. Not pronounced, even involved. involved. They are familiar with the music that we are presenting. I don't believe they that. They know what is being presented. No? I know. See, the moment uh, the tanpura and the voice or the instrument is heard in Hindustani music, it's arrested. Really, I tell you, wherever I gone, you are arrested. You are a musician. Not because of that, not because of that. Because just, it's a question of tonal purity and uh, what you call uh, the, the consonances with the surdi and the voice, you know. That what he says, Prabhupada, absolutely true. Yes. I am drawn only because of what he has said. I am happy that in, there is mutual I was admiration. drawn to North Indian music. Earlier I didn't know anything about it. Like Badegura Malikam. Ah. Uh, I came all the way from Madurai to Chennai. It was very difficult to get money from my parents. Somehow they managed. And he, he sang in music academy. Peace is full of them. One week he was in Chennai. Ah, yeah. I heard all his concerts. And uh, just so, and, and by text also. I got interested in Gulamali because of Kakar Sajini, that record. <laughs> it was sold for four rupees then. <laughs> we were we, we used to But call you it are all magicians. No, we please understand. I was I was not a performing artist then. I was only eighteen years, seventeen years uh -huh. old. <laughs> but very mu musical. But very <laughs> musical at that age. No, no, that, <laughs> as, as she said, I come, I come from a family where the music background is totally absent. Okay. Oh, just to put it in perspective, 
I think there is a lot of admiration for Hindustani music in South. Of course. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So, sure. so the point we are trying to make <coughs> is the point that is missing is that there is no reciprocity in the North. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the here point. is one. That's Hello, Kannada. <laughs> See, uh, but that is a solution for this. Before we go to the next icon, I just uh, want to make one point. I just want please. to make just one point. He has to speak. <laughs> <laughs> That's my role today. Come on, <laughs> you'll burst. <laughs> um, uh, as you know, the artists of the century keep performing, and as we hear great musicians, and as the audience are you know awestruck, and still they don't have the capacity to understand, the only thing that can be done to preserve the heritage is by archiving the classical parts of the compositions and making a wonderful discography to be available so that at one point of time after 20 years maybe I have my students in US and UK they never bothered to <coughs> learn violin when they were around here in Chennai they were busy preparing for their IIT and things like that but after six years they sent me an email ma'am we miss Indian culture we want to come back to you so we can use technology we can use governmental support to make but there is a lot of music available in the market exactly. today. Exactly. Yeah. What about but that? A lot of music. Not no, but what? our point is like how to convince the audience and how to make it available. At some mm. point of time, I am sure that the audience will come back to us Narmada, for this conversation. Me to yeah. The audience are there, but to create audience, the, 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 there are two, three levels of today, those who are computer savvy, they have all kinds of music there. You should see the, the blog. So much of music is there. Yeah. And they comment and then there is so much, so much is there. But actually on the ground, you know, it's not there because the people have so much of other distractions. Diversions. We have rock is there, pop is there, the all so many groups are there. Each stay, each um, town has their own uh, pop, jazz, whatever groups are yeah. there and light cinema music is there. I, I won't uh, say, I don't have anything minus to say about cinema music. It's all highly organized, perfectly done, two days, rehearsals and all, and, and uh, too, too many takes and all, done. perfect music is there. So it's very attractive to the ears. So why should they bother to come and sit in a concert and uh, you charge thousand rupees per ticket? Also, but t now tickets are not there. Even then you have to invite people to go go around houses and invite people. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. Could sir, we, uh, could uh, you, sir, sir, only yes. way is to, as Ma, yes, Mani said, just to start from the schools. Yeah, that's what I mean. No. Start from the schools. Yeah, yeah. And corporates, corporates, they have so much money. They should do something at least for their own people, no? Ah. Thousands of people work in corporates. The, I personally, I have sponsors. Also, will only sponsor those artists, glamour artists. They will not give no, money. I am not speaking artists. about sponsors. I am speaking speaking about people whose welfare, the corporates, they are taking care of the the staff. You know, two, two, three thousand, three thousand, four thousand. I tell them, you have um, employ some teachers who will come and teach your children. I agree with you. Um, here is uh, Mr. Mathur. Uh, is, I think ITC is perhaps the only um, sp sponsor today, not sponsor, I would say great supporter, Sangeet Researcher. But I think Ms. Mathur, you had a question to ask. I've really got a comment to make. My knowledge is severely limited. But in these last four years, I think that it is the quality of the musician that determines the, the response of the audience. With Van Gopalakrishnan, I have a comment. At my at my academy where I work, we have had exceptionally well attended and tremendously joyous performances from people from your tradition. <coughs> there was a rapt silence. They gave them the same respect and the same enthusiastic response. And it is not because it is Carnatic music, excuse me, it is the quality of the music and what this person conveyed almost from his soul. I am going a little beyond my thing and telling you 
that as far as response is concerned, we took some of our Carnatic performers to Bangladesh. There is a lady who sang, and she sang so beautifully and so emotionally well that she got a standing ovation. She was one of three artists who got one. And this audience was around 15,000. So I don't think these type of experiences may be, different, may be very different. But I do believe that it is ultimately the quality of the musician. And this I seem to have experienced in the 40 or 50 performances that we have had since my take over. Thank you. And I have just one more point to say. Um, we found that same classical compositions being mumbled by the tea shop owners when it came in the films. Like we have one very famous composition of Bayaju Bhaura, which everybody sings. They don't understand the classical or the words. It is the type of the projection, not only for the artist, but also for the composition. The same way has happened. Mari Mari Ninne, it's a classical composition, became so popular because it was sung in films. And same are the cases with. So I have a sincere it's feeling. It's a popular medium films. The voices are very good. It goes with the visual. Right. So, I mean, it, it's a different thing. No, altogether. I only mean to say that the same compositions which would not have been appreciated by the lay audience, as you said, takes a wonderful pedestal when it is shown in a very emotional situation of the film. So, it's people only five are minutes song mm. again. It's yes. only five minutes. <coughs> Half an hour <laughs> performance yeah. is another thing again. I think we are cutting into Nayan's time. Oh. <laughs> so, I think uh, we can. Um, in the next session, we can take up all these issues. But uh, being an instrumentalist, I feel very much that your time should not be cut. <laughs> uh, Nayan, uh, I mean, I, I don't have to say more about him. He's an excellent, excellent sitar player. He's an excellent, excellent tabla player and also a vocalist. He runs an uh, unbelievably wonderful school. Um, how did you start and would you like to say the same question uh, which I asked Prabhaji? Thank you. With all respects to elders, I start my... <clears throat> I was extremely fortunate to be born in a musical family. My father was Pandit Nikhil Ghosh, one of the foremost tabla maestros of 20th century. My uncle was Pannalal Ghosh, the father of Indian, North Indian classical flute. So I was really lucky to be born in this family. Music was there in my family for uh, further more generations. My grandfather was a sitar player, Akshay Kumar Ghosh, who had learned from Kasim Ali Khan Sahib, that is the direct descendant of Tansen Rababia. My great-grandfather, Hara Kumar Ghosh, was a Dhrupadiya and Pakhavaj player. Great-great-grandfather, Bangshi Vadan Ghosh, and great-great-great-grandfather, Ramlochan Ghosh, were Dhrupad singers. <coughs> So I happen to be, so far as we have records, I happen to be the sixth generation. Therefore, it is not surprising that, it should not be a matter of surprise that uh, a child in a musician's family takes so naturally to music since absolute infancy. I got a balanced training from my great father in both tabla and vocal music simultaneously since childhood, early childhood. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> of course my father being two contradictory personality within him. One was he was a complete conservative when it came to the matter and content of the music. And he was a very progressive person when it came to teaching, composing, <coughs> education, music education. So with all these things in mind, <clears throat> he took, he was very strict about very restrained exposure since early childhood because he al always believed an early flame also dies early. So he, with restrained exposure, I gave my first proper tabla solo broadcast at the age of four. Oh. No, All India Radio. 
<clears throat> and uh, since the age of 12, I was seriously on stage as a tabla player, soloist, as well as accompanist from the age of 16. My sitar talim started very late, also from my father, because my grandfather was a sitar player and my uncle Panalal Ghosh was initially a sitar player. So sitar compared to tabla started late, in the sense I started at the age of 10, sitar. So tabla was more natural to me and today also it is, I am very grateful that music lovers, musicians regard me essentially as a tabla player and, and also a sitar player later, but essentially. The tabla talim from my father, I would say was so wholesome that it covered all the gharanas of tabla without messing up with the stylistics. Oh. <clears throat> When a, for, when a Farukhabad composition is to be played, when a Delhi for, uh, composition is to be played, Ajrada, Lucknow, each, are, each composition is played according to the requirements of that gharana with the technique, the <coughs> production, etc. And because of the vocal talim that I simultaneously received, there was tremendous focus and attention on tonal beauty and tonal quality throughout my training in vocal music, in sitar and in tabla. So in tabla, essentially the solo repertoire, which I was very fortunate to receive a very, very massive uh, repertoire of tabla. I mean, today I'm labeled as a purist, but uh, I don't mind. Uh, it can be seen positively and negatively also. <laughs> Uh, my side-by-side -side talim with, on sitar helped me. My father had in-depth knowledge of sitar also because he had a deep study of the binkar ang of sitar, of uh, stringed instruments also. And uh, he himself was a very good sitar composer also in terms of gut compositions. And this went hand in hand and uh, my academic studies also, my parents both had, were insist insistent on completing it formally, <coughs> side by side. This helped me, and the biggest advantage that I got in my life besides a complete musical understanding and perspective from my father, also, the presence of many great musicians in my home. My father's guru, Ustad Ahmed Jan Thirakwa, lived nine or ten years of his last part of his life in my home. So, I was fortunate to get at least eight years of direct talim from him also. And more than talim, he made me realize what is called riyaz. He was 90 plus. I was 12, 11, 13, whatever. <clears throat> but he made me, in my vacation days, practice eight hours a day. And he practiced with me also. And uh, four hours in the morning and four hours in the evening. And talim going on round the clock. And on my school days, four hours was compulsory of riyaz. And very rigorous old school traditional riyaz uh, on tabla, which helped to bring out all the different tonalities of exactly. tabla. The weighty, the very uh, fine ones, the bold ones, everything, all, uh, the entire uh, gamut. <clears throat> Thirakwa Khan Sahib's influence was very strong on my tabla, perhaps the strongest. Of course, my father's earlier guru, Ustad Amir Hussain Khan Sahib, also lived in our home. And I was, as a child, you know, he was like a grandpa to me, so I grew up uh, listening to his tabla, learning from him also, climbing his shoulders also, <clears throat> you know, as a child. And then my father's friends, my uncle's friends, were regular visitors. So starting from the senior, very senior musicians like Omkar Naji, 
बड़े गुलाम अली खान साहब अमीर खान साहब वॉज ए वेरी क्लोज फ्रेंड ऑफ माई फादर रहीम उद्दीन डागर आई सॉ दीज ग्रेट मास्टर्स फ्रॉम वेरी क्लोज क्वार्टर्स केसर बाई सिंस अर्ली चाइल्ड हुड एंड हियरिंग दम बेगम अख्तर जी एंड जहांगीर खान साहब हु वॉज वन जनरेशन ओल्डर टू अहमद जान थे I also heard his tabla when he was 100 years old. He was he lived 113, but he was fabulous at the age of 100. Uh, there was a felicitation that was organized in Bombay, hmm. and uh, the at that time the leading tabla players were Ahmed Jan Thirakwa, Shamsuddin Khan, Habibuddin Khan Saab, Amir Hussain Khan Saab. They were all sitting in front, and the younger musicians all were sitting at the back. which was my father vj jog fayaz ahmed niyaz ahmed khan sahab all of them were among the younger lot sitting at the back and i as a child not knowing protocol was sitting on the laps of ahmed jan thirakwa abibuddin khan sahab and fayaz ahmed khan sahab and so on you know as a child but i remember the day and the performance of jahangir khan sahab when ustad ahmed jan thirakwa ustad abibuddin khan sahab shamsuddin khan sahab requested him that to give a short performance after amir husain khan sahab had already played amir husain khan sahab was already a father figure with gray beard at that time and the senior most guru in bombay and he had played a solo he was around 70 and jahangir khan sahab was requested by all these people that prasad ke taur pe as a prasad if we could hear you a little he said this is not my age to play this young kid has played so well who was 70 <laughs> is bachche ne itna acha bajaya meri umar nahi hai but then on fervent requests he gave about half an hour of solo the first 2 3 minutes his hands were shaky 100 years old but then he played such a beautiful such a musical tabla it was a musical experience it was beyond percussion and that i was 7 years old but i was very lucky that i could understand or appreciate or imbibe that and that those sounds are still there with me in my wow. system <laughs> yes uh, this is a wonderful uh, beginning which you have said would you like to say something about sitar about sitar i casually started playing around the age of 10 and my father saw me getting si- spending more and more time with sitar so a proper talim started by the time i was 12 or 13 years old though he had a very in depth knowledge of sitar which was deeply appreciated by ustad vilayat khan sahab nikhil banerjee and ravi shankar ji they had a tremendous respect for my father for his sitar knowledge also but being a very open minded person my father invited senior musicians to approve whether i was on the right lines senior most being ustad ahmed jan thirakwa amir khan sahab dt joshi radhika mohan moitra bimal mukherjee and many such people were invited from time to time and i had to perform for them not only to, to get their gyan prakash ghosh not only to get approval but also to decide whether i should be a sitar player or a tabla player and time and again my i and my father both felt i should choose any one and not do both because it might hamper the growth but i was i remained confused all my life because all these great masters said that when you play tabla you are a blue blooded tabla player when you play sitar you are a full fledged sitar player finally gyan prakash ghosh who was considered one of the most enlightened gurus of 20th century and a highly educated person he told me i feel you should carry on with both not only does that make you unique but i can see that you find a sense of completeness by doing both so which is true that i feel the need of both uh, in my own musical understanding and experience or whatever you call anubhuti or whatever because the melodic richness of sitar and vocal music somehow penetrates in my tabla also when i play 
And likewise, when I play sitar, there is a tabla that's going on inside me. So I don't re always need an accompanist. And in my practice, I never have an accompanist because the tala system has got ingrained. So I feel a whole, wholesome feeling. Thank you. I think it's a very well, very well said, and it is very true. That is true. Yes, Nayan's uh, tabla is really melodic. There is no question about it. Now, what do you think of the, I asked Prabhaji the same question that uh, but one uh, uh, step forward I didn't ask deliberately. Yeah. I said today's music is becoming entertainment, thrill, etc., etc. <coughs> but there is a new kind of music, fusion music which is started. What do you think about it? I being among the younger people, I know. <laughs> but I'll uh, <coughs> say this way, probably because I got a very strict talim and rigorous talim, I feel the younger musicians, much younger to me today, who are making it very successful in their careers, with the exception of some of them who are well-trained under, under good gurus, I feel I can see a lack of training or uh, substantial content in the performances. I'm sorry, I don't want to be critical to them, they are my younger brothers and sisters, but Talim ka abhav dikta hai. In terms of content, in terms of techniques, also the old schools did have a whole very vast range of techniques and sound possibilities. Yeah. That is not understood to many newer generations, newer generation musicians, because they are thinking they are, re they are discovering something more than what the older people did. No. The older people already ex have gone through the whole process. Shabash. And uh, one minute. Uh, Arvind Bhai, I would like to know what is fusion music, first of all. Yeah. What do you uh, mean by fusion music? Yeah. Fusion music is something that, uh, although I was invited to play with a few very world-famous uh, black jazz musicians in New Orleans, etc., etc., those were purely momentary for an experimentation because they also wanted, so I interacted with them. My father interacted with Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, Dave Brubeck, but that was only momentary. That's not fusion music today. I know people make fun of it by calling confusion. There is no doubt it is confusion, but uh, the necessity of fusion music, I feel, is nil because every music its own identity it's, uh, has its own identity own flavor own beauty own uh, um, uh, aroma yeah, yeah. and uh, those should not be mixed up and uh, and it's a futile exercise i feel fusing doing fusion music <coughs> in any case if you go to see our hindu especially talking about hindustani music it itself is a product of fusion so yeah uh, different over time. centuries yeah, yeah, yeah. that is a, that's a different yeah. uh, but the I, the, uh, I feel the whole idea of fusion music is a big fraud because, you know, two musicians, three musicians sitting together, maybe Hindustani Karnatic, maybe uh, Indian and Western, but everyone getting his own turn and he's playing his own music. That's all so where is the fusion? Is. Fusion mm -hmm. is when two musics have joined and fused to create a Ex third. Exactly. So that third yeah. never happened. That never it happened. Happened, happened. Huh? But just as I well. have done, I have done. Okay. I initiated. You're talking of uh, Hindustani and Carnatic, yes. Oh, okay. No, I'm talking of Indian and Western. I think. I, I think. Um, in, uh, just as I well. interacted with uh, Dave Brubeck ah. and uh, those um, uh, great artists that there's a Stan Gage and all that, and uh, in the fifties. And then I, I had my first. Uh, I never called it fusion. Mm. Fusion is. As you said, it's, it's not possible. Call it interaction. Uh, it only it is uh, integration through interaction. Yeah, that's all you can do. Right. Uh, because both Hindustani music and Carnatic music are so much of what you regimental, mm. regulatory aspects are there. Grammar, so much of grammar is there, which is not there in if is there in Western classical music, mm -mm. but in jazz, pop, or rock, all this, they are all creative, experimental artists. Experiment. So within that parameter, 
if you want to do a composition in a particular raga it doesn't work mm -mm. because the, the raga the concept is not there for them so i have played with uh, john hand he has played my composition don't you? why man why do you want and of octaves my instrument five octaves i'll change the scale when you change the scale it is an, an another composition that this concept they cannot understand so but as an experiment and the artists are really seriously bent art is that something can be there something. that's all but as you say why same way with yuga brand is also mm. so many you i have not recently in the recent past i am not going into yuga brand but yuga brand we have done so many yuga but what happens there the earlier yuga brand i had with uh, mg and myself chadurlal ji and uh, vijay jog in calcutta in one of their conferences in the 50s 1954 or so early morning 2 o'clock so one one around uh, composition we play carnatic we play one composition in dostani mm. and then that's it same thing is happening even today and then one uh, raga we take for jewel bandi yeah and then tabla mardangam yeah um, i have I'll a suggestion to make uh, we did a fusion in kerala please pardon me yeah. aravin parik sir no, please, please pardon me we did a fusion in kerala where we took all the baroque compositions from the very old uh, british music then we made a notation with a swedish uh, guitarist and we presented we included the right type of we did not have a drum but we had a mridagam and hedaka and they had one flute and that was it so that type of fusion as you yes. very beautifully said yes. integrate Why do you want the body parts some mm -hmm. commonalities are there baroque music is one yeah. gregorian chants are there etc yeah, et exactly i think uh, then what um, uh, great icons even have told me that they do not get as much money to play their own concert rather than fusion concerts fusion <laughs> concert get a lot of money so i think that is one of the major uh, reasons that our young people no, i think that's a down to earth I, I think the fusion uh, has come so much in vogue primarily because of wrong corporate support that's why i'm saying <laughs> and uh, the corporates obviously they understand not even the abc of music fortunately so to please their clients they want something it's just like you know you you go for chaat or bhelpuri in that kind of a uh, attitude towards music <coughs> and this is very sad because uh, the corporates are encouraging uh, fusion music and supporting financially very strongly besides of course in classical music only the uh, star artists um, uh, the corporates need to wake up now to what are they really contributing to the country and to the music uh, 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 their contribution is turning negative so we'll have to probably educate our corporates right now uh, no, no, we have the, we have had as all india musicians group meeting with corporates in chennai we have had a big meeting in uh, i'm not talking about itc but uh, it no, is no, no. doing great here in the same way so no, he is baba mai itc ka nahi bolta hu na mai see itc is an exception yeah. let us uh, let us face it and it has been doing for 31 no, years now noble uh, institution yeah, yeah. Uh, 31 mm. years they have been you know, supporting but i can tell you one thing that there has been good number now in bombay at least who are gradually changing i think it's uh, it will take time the man mm. in charge of that uh, yeah. portfolio has to be music minded yeah. and if that is so now uh, before uh, before uh, we end i i wanted to ask the audience do you think this kind of uh, interviewing if you like to call it is helpful for you to know the artist better so that in the afternoon when we have an interaction with this artist you have understood them known them we have been familiar with their thinking etc do you think it is helpful i i forgot to uh, complete my answer one about sitar what arvind ji had asked me my major influence in sitar which one anyone can see is ustad vilayat khan sahab uh, and of course i did derive inspiration from nikhil banerji ali akbar khan sahab and all and my main sources of inspiration have besides the technique on sitar vilayat khan sahab which i follow the music of bade gulam likha amir khan sahab fayaz khan sahab abdul karim khan sahab mushtaq husain khan sahab have been very very strong in my mind because of my vocal talim also 
So my father was also a vocalist and had learned from Wahid Khan sahab, Abdul Wahid Khan sahab, and Mushtaq Hussain Khan sahab, and was a close friend of Ayaz Khan sahab, Vilayat Hussain Khan sahab also. So the elements of, by the way, I forgot to also tell, in the process of my growth, um, my father saw to it that I also got talim from people like Latafat Hussain Khan sahab, Yunus Hussain Khan sahab, Khadim Hussain Khan sahab, I'm from the Agra. I got talim from Ishtiaq Hussain Khan sahab, the son of Mushtaq Hussain Khan sahab, in Sehaswan, a lot of compositions. I got talim from another person which who is virtually unknown, Iqbal Ali Khan sahab. He was the son of Khurshed Ali Khan sahab of Lucknow, the last Kawal Bacche Gharana singer, the original Bade Muhammad Khan Gharana. Right. I got talim from him also right. and Gyan Babu and many other people. No wonder you have put on a lot of weight now. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, here but we see, have... No, uh, I felt it is... It is very necessary to acknowledge these people because no, uh, that is very true. whatever I am today is the result of all these different right. guidances. Nayan, can My you case. please uh, demonstrate for us a uh, few guts of Kasim Ali, uh, the earlier style, gradually how Tinchar Gat Sanadu. And you must also You will see say, how sir, the, the technique yeah. of instrumental technique is gradually <coughs> being vocalized. Sir, before you start, a yeah. uh, point of interruption. We have been uh, talking about for our Stalin, I mean uh, Riyas and all that. Excellent. We have been talking about grooming the artists or who are shaping themselves to become artists and all that. What are we going to say to diffuse the classical music knowledge to people of India? Mm. How are you going to do it? This is, this is exactly what I am driving home is. You have to start it from the elementary school. It has to start from academic school. The setups, elementary school. From elementary school. They should know. If you don't have an audience, mm -hmm. what is the use of your art? Uh, in this regard, my uh, father Nikhil Ghosh had time and again met the prime ministers of that time, including Indira Gandhiji and the education minister Triguna Sen and all of them, where he insisted that elementary schools must have the, uh, rudimentary training in uh, music. And if you are teaching geography, why don't you teach what is Miraj famous for, what is um, uh, Lucknow famous <coughs> for, or, or uh, Madurai, or what, these places. And history, when we are teaching, you know, it's, it's all, all schools teach only political history. What about the cultural history? Diane, let me tell you the latest. Last year, All India Musicians Group, Shivji, and I think uh, Kiranji <coughs> is here, Kiran Sevji, uh, speak Mackey. They both went to see Kapil Sibal and uh, he explained that, look here, we, we were insisting that it should be compulsory in elementary schools. Yeah. He said that today if I make music, tomorrow dance people will come mm. and tomorrow third day painting people will come and then theater people will come, then I have nothing yeah. else to teach. Uh, see, if, if we have in the syllabus, all these are made compulsory. So he said, I can make it recommendatory after class nine. Mm -hmm. So that is where the, the situation ended. That I think there is some... But, but, some but at surface yeah. level, but they can expose our students to... No, sure, yeah, that is yeah, training, totally. that is training, but basic information should start from elementary school. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, Absolutely. simple Sarigama Padhanisa also will be helpful. Uh, if they said uh, A, A for apple, B for this thing, you say S for sitar can also come, uh, T for tabla, M for mridangam can also come. Why? why it, for Nayan, yes, it has yes, to be. Yes. So starting from the very <laughs> basic uh, uh, KG, KG class, however, uh, uh, as Mani Sahib has just said. No, but I think we, we need to have, a, in my opinion, a, a workshop where we should have a government. Part, of, me, part of my father's suggestion was uh, implemented by Maharashtra government when in the 6th and 8th standard they included the biographies of Badi Gulam Ali Khasab and Panalal Ghosh, but that was not sufficient. Right. The, Let me have one I will introduce myself. I am Dikunathan, basically Western classical violinist. I am a member of executive member of uh, Delhi Music Society, Chana Kaburi. Uh, my point is that if you go uh, watch the videos of the emergence of China, Korea, Japan, they are giving elementary uh, uh, lessons for Western classical music. And most famous, uh, now current famous artists are from China, Korea, and Japan, while in Western classical violinists. They are going to conquer the Europe. Very great wall of China Music Academy. 
They are training in Western classical music. Right. So then in India, India also we can uh, do that. Elementary. Sure. So should be done. Simple. Yeah. Excuse me. Simple thing. Simple statement I make. Before independence, all schools had, all proper schools has music and drawing. I don't say painting, music and drawing, and languages. I studied in Nanakulam from fifth class to SSLC. I had music classes. I had I could opt for to learn either Arabic or Hindi or um, any Malayalam or Sanskrit. Like that. It was a part of uh, what you call development. After independence, I don't know what has happened all these years. There is there is no we mentioned about ninth standard, somebody. Nothing happens after ninth standard, only education, nothing else. All my students they get get out. When they pass eighth standard, they don't come. It's full time studies only. Absolutely. It is, it absolutely. Is much easier to teach a sound path than acting part. Whatever has to have to happen, have to happen before eighth standard. Yes, so just uh, to continue uh, uh, this kind of session, you think are useful. I did not hear. Yes, uh, yes, please. I have only one comment, sir. I wish you could have such a session at the academy. At SRA, because I think the scholars there would greatly benefit from this wisdom. Oh, sure, sure, definitely. I'm, I'm sure the great musicians are sitting there. And uh, what uh, Gaira Khanji said this morning, I would once again like to emphasize to people that these friends, these icons, these great musicians who are. Uh, always in demand and always very busy, have come here absolutely on an honorary capacity. They have not uh, charged a cent uh, of their time. I think uh, 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 we are extremely grateful to them. I think, Nayan, uh, I think, uh, please. Nayan, before you end, you have to say two sentences about your great son, who is so young oh. and who is doing so well. Yeah. Father can't talk about his son. Mm -hmm. I'm told he has a son who's extremely talented, who's an extremely good tabla player. Extremely is unbelievably yeah. good. His son is unbelievable, really. What's his name? Tabla. His name Isha. is Ishan. Ishan. How old is he? Unbelievable. Now he's twelve. I <laughs> don't don't feel embarrassed. <laughs> Arvindji has requested for old gath compositions. <clears throat> uh, I'm playing now a gath in Jinjoti, which is a Feroz Khani gath. Normally, we are used to, we know about Masih Khani and Raza Khani gaths. Feroz Khani is a bit rare. Feroz Khani gaths are where the entire sthai goes into several avartans, more than one, and does not require an antara. The, Antara is also inbuilt in it. Ends where it started. Ends where it started.
This is a Feroz Khani Rath by Muhammad Amir Khan Sahib. Gat by Murad Ali Khan Sahib. Old traditional compositions. Or contemporary stuff. simple gut by my father in Desh in the old Raza Khani style Slow Masid Khani Gad by my father in the Gaur Saran. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm.